Australian melody. <laughs> so you are Australian melody. <laughs> Thank you. As you like. Very sad. In the morning I told that I have come only fulfill the desire of my Guru Dev and Shiksha Guru Dev especially. You know how wonderfully in couple of years Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj preached over the whole world. In mountains, in oceans, in far remote villages, everywhere in the whole world. And he wrote so many books, translated, authorized books, and he established species center here and there and establishing, you know, publishing books and distributing. Book distribution is also a part of bhakti. We should do what he did, we should try to follow, actually. But taking the essence of the books himself, ourselves, and then to preach others and to distribute. First you should test the nectar of the books. Now Birk, sir, he wrote so many and everything is there. But even he, he was here in this world, he has written so many books, not a stopping. And that is why he uh, kept some remnants. remnants for me that you should complete. And to fulfill their desires now, but the authentic books are coming like Gita Govinda, 
भजन रहस्य उज्जवल भक्ति रामित सिंधु भक्ति विश्वनाथ चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर एक्सप्लेनेशन एक कृष्ण विल गिव मी लाइफ एंड ऑन सम हिज मर्स जैव धर्म बट यू विल हैव टू हेल्प स्वामी जी मैं शिक्षा गुरु है गिवेन मी और सो मैनी क्वालिफाइड डिवोटिज दैट दे आर माई दे आर हेल्पिंग सो मच एंड आई कैन नॉट रिफेयर यू श्याम रानी हेल्पिंग इन ऑल भक्ति शाह महाराज अरण्य महाराज सज्जन महाराज वन महाराज आश्रम महाराज पद्मनाभ सो मेनी अबाउट हंड्रेड कंप्यूटर्स आर गोइंग ऑन इन माई दे आर ऑलवेज इंगेज माई सेल्फ ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स इन राइटिंग बुक्स एंड आई एम हैप्पी एंड ही स्टिल प्रीचिंग ही आर दे आर गोइंग कमिंग मीटिंग इन सो मेनी डिवोटिंग आई एम वेरी हैप्पी now <coughs> as i told in the morning the aim and our and object of our life and then a process by which we can attain that not that first process and then object no? as we that had Our aim and object of the life. Oh, then we will have to proceed. How to attain this? And it will be by bhakti only. About more than five thousand years before, in India, on the bank of Gomti River, Namisharanya, so many. devotees they were assembled at namishar and all were thinking what to do very powerful kaliyug kaliyug is coming and then every will will do against their religious things my all these be engaged in sense gratifications and they are they will be bound to do all these things to shape from kalyug prabhav influence influence first should be in the main time shut goswami ke shona kadi of 88000 the what is can they are assembled at a one no computer no internet microphone internet nothing was there no sound system no telephone nothing was there and how they were collected very wonderful and they then they get proper honor to shut goswami who shut goswami to to goswami sur second sut goswami who was the disciple of sula sukdev goswami and they asked what should be done and then he told प्रायण अल्पायुष सभ्य क्लायुषण युगे जना मंद सुमंद मंद भाग्य उपाधि प्रायण अल्पायुष इन द टाइम ऑफ सत्युग द एज ऑफ जनरल पर्सन्स वॉज नॉट लेस दैन वन लैक इयर्स sometimes more and in theta reduced 15000 years or like that 
and after that in Dapur. Dwapar, one hundred or more than something, and in Kalju, even not hundred years. So Prayan Alpa Ayusha, very very small age. Their life is very short. Short. Manda. <coughs> Their intelligence is very dull. Shumanda matayo. They are engaged in sense fright, pathetic creativity, and other things. Always in bad activities. Eating what? Meat. Fishes. Fishes. Eggs. Especially. <coughs> Deep, two months. Fishes. Fishes. Especially fishes. I see that all one, even cats I have seen, they are taking fishes. Fishes. <laughs> now all the birds, they sit very like a gentleman on one leg. And when they will see any fish, oh. <laughs> all likes. Western civilization depends on this. Manda Bhagya, they will do for good, but it will come, the result will come what? Unlucky. Opposite result. Opposite. All will be very unhappy. Upadrata, always so many kinds of disturbances. Disturbances. They can fix their mind. What to do? You know all these things. Patasalo, Atajatsarang, Samudhitya Manishaya, Guruji Tanme, Saddhanarang Jena Atma Samprasi. You know everything from your Guru Sukhdev Goswami that Bhadarayan Krishna Dvaipan Ved Vyas has done. And that books you have read from your Guru Dev. You have heard the essence of all the Vedic literature you have heard. So you know all the things. So now, for us, we are Sadhbhalu. Faithful person. Faithful person. Towards whom? Krishna. So please, what is the essence of all the literatures and all the uh, classes of your Gurudev and others that you have heard from Nara? They are and others. You should tell us. Jayatma Sam Prasidati. By that practicing, our soul will be satisfied. Our soul will be happy. Now in this world, those who are not devotee or even Kanishtadikari, they are not happy. Even only beginning from Madhyam Adhikari, Madhyam, they can realize something and they can be happy. Otherwise, no one in this world is happy. So he asked and then he became very happy. Then he began to speak what he has heard from Guru. Hmm? Sutta Grihitaya. What mean? But he has so heard from his Gurudev by serving him, by questioning him very honorably. And what he has realized, he began to tell. Sabai punsam paro dharmo jato bhakti radho khali ahet tukya vyavhita ja bhakti purushottami. Oh, what was the question? How our soul will be happy and satisfied? So he is telling, Sabai, oh, surely and surely and surely. If we will follow Param Dharma, and what is that Param Dharma? 
from that man a highest topic of religious, that is Swadharma, transcendental religious, religion. Religion. And what that bhakti adhokhya? Adhokhya means Krishna. Who Krishna? Nishingade, Bhamande, who? Bhakis, who? Vajindananda Nishama Sunda, He Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandho Jagatpate, Gopes Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta, Vajindananda, Gopisa, the most beloved of all the gopis, especially of Srimati Rai, that very Krishna. His Supreme Lord, Shrayan Bhagavan. In the end, after that it will be established. So, Bhakti of Krishna, Ahetuka Prahati Hata, Kajales, and Aparti Hata, like honey can't in a waste, like honey unbroken. Unbroken, unbroken stream of honey. Stream. And by this Atma will supersede the Atma will surely, surely and surely. By Nishit Rupena. What? Sure and certain. Sure and certain. So all will be happy. So I have come to remind all these things. Don't uh, always remember two shlokas, one of Gita and one of Srimad Bhagavatam. Tattre nukampam susamekshamano bhunjare vatmatritam vipadam hitapaka padure yudadhan namaste jivekta jama mukti padeshatayam. What sufferings are coming? Anyone cannot give any kind of disturbance or any kinds of what? suffering, distress. Suffering, distress. Anyone is not responsible. Who is the responsible? You, yourself. Your activities, bad activities of past lives. If it is coming, try to tolerate. But thinking that this is the mercy of Krishna. If anyone causing us like Parikshit Maharaj, what we what is thought, oh Krishna, mercy has come. So many pure souls like Sukhde Goswami, Narad, Vyas, Pula, Pulasta, Gautam, all came in a moment. So where is cause? So don't blame anyone that he is the root. Root of all evil. Lila Sukhi is the root. <laughs> Any other is the root. Prajavalla Prabhu is the root of all evils. <laughs> so don't think, then you will be happy. Dukhesu Anudigna Mana. Sukhesu Bigat Spriya. Bita Raghavaya Krodha Sthiti Vrata Muni Ucchyate. Dukhe Swanu Dikinamana. Don't be disturbed when sufferings are coming. Be very bold. And Sukhe Su Bigat Prasya. Don't have any ambition of being happy. What Krishna is giving? Just for talking. And think mercy. Be tabrag bhai krodha. You should give up your fear or attachment to worldly things, to son, wife, husband, children, position, any money. Don't. We have not come or taken from your wife, boyhood, from your own, the, after your mother. Have you brought anything? 
If in this world you are losing something, Krishna has given. Give he has taken that. You have not from from heavenly planet or any place. Golok Bindavan. So why? Why? Why you are anxious so much? You cannot do anything in this world. Whether in you want or not, Maya will not test it for you. Old days will come. Very, very soon, running, and death will come. Then all the things what you have collected, position, money, everything, or son, daughter, nephew, and others, will have to be. Where to go, you don't know. If you are not doing bhajan, you will be animals like hogs, pigs, and others will cut and take. So be careful. So we should know. He has told Shudra Swami, "Bhakti adhokha je." We know the meaning of adhokha to Krishna, and especially Prajnana Nandan, Shyam Sundar, Radha Kant, Gopi Balla. We know this adhokha. But what is bhakti? We should know. Bhakti is very vyapa. Vyapa, very vast. Oh, all pervading. Huh? All pervading. All pervading. Vyapa. From sadha, last fraction, and up to madana khamaha bha. But there is gradation of bhakti. As high. Vaishnav are that bhakti will be more superior. Dhruva is bhakta, Pralab is bhakta, Ambarish Maharaj is bhakta, Hanuman is bhakta, Pandvayar is bhakta, Uddhav is bhakta. Are they in one category? After those who are not bhakta, they are kaya view of Krishna and Radhika. Shidam Subal, Nanda Baba Jasura and the others, Gopis, all the Gopis under the guidance of Rup Manjari, all are bhakta. But are they same? No. No, never. Even <coughs> you should know that the bhakti of Dhru Maharaj. Why bhakti, but not pure? Pranam Maharaj pure, but mixed with yeah. as for jigyan. Hanuman, but was lacking some thang brishamba. Intimacy. 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 Pandavas more superior, but lacking something. And Uddha. Oh. He was like Krishna. This he was more more dear than soul even Brahma, Shankar, Lakshmi, Lakshmi, even Sankar. from Balram, even he was most dear of Krishna. But Uddhav could not find the end of the Gopi's love and affection. Shima, what? Limit. 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 And Gopi has how many? One, two, three, four, five. Unlimited, millions and millions of Gopis are, millions. and their all moods are different. So we want to explain something for Bhakti, and you should. I have told so many times, but again I am remembering. Keep connected. Huh? Keep connected. You say. Keep connected. Keep connected. Koto ganta bol. So you should try to know what is real bhakti, and then try to practice. First, you should uh, establish your goal, goal of the life, goal of your devotion. 
What you want? Do you want to be Rukmini or the Dasis of Rukmini? Or you want to be like Sita? Do you want What is remaining? Uddhav? You want to be like Uddhav? Yes, yes. <laughs> you? You don't know. You? You want to be Uddhav? Very good. <laughs> you want to be Lalta Vishakha Gand? Sakhi? You? <laughs> what you want? Don't go to talk. Don't think I'm goofy. Come down from the level of Shraddha and practice the form Shraddha. What is Bhakti? Rupa Swami has discovered from all Shastra and what he heard from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He made a paribhasha, definition of Bhakti. In Srimad Bhagavat Vidya, we see Lakshana Hi Bhakti Yoga Shat, Ne Gunasya Udahritam, Ahetu Kya Abhya Vita Jya Bhakti Shema Hi. In other Narada Rishi, Sandilya Rishi, they have fixed oh, the definition of bhakti. Sat upadhi binir muktam, tat parathaina nirvalam, shikesas. And Sandilya, saparam urakti rishi. It covers all the definition in the Sangha, Virajita, Sundha, Jnana, Karma, Jnana, Vrita, Ankulne, Krishna, Bhakti, Ruttama. Try to remember this definition. And according to definition you should try to follow Krishna Bhakti. Very soon you will be like. Oh, you should. Explain in a good way. <laughs> Where is my Om Gana Timaranda Sam Gana Nana Salakya? Chakshur Unvalitam Bhyena Thasmai Sri Gurave Namaha So Srila Gurudev ordered me to speak a few words to elaborate on the meaning of the definition of transcendental I devotion. I told you in Bhakti Rasami Sintu Bhindi you should try to fully So on the order of Gurudev, I'll try to comment on the explanation of this verse of Srila Rupa Goswami. If part. anyone is not understanding any question, they can put up. And we'll do this following the explanation given by Srila Vishnu Chakrati Thakur in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu. Hmm? So first of all, Srila Rupa Goswami part has given the definition by the inspiration of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Anya Vilashita Shunyam Jnana kama jnana britam anukulyena krishnanu shilanam bhakti uttama Our first level of understanding is the general translation. What is that? The continuous, uninterrupted cultivation of all endeavors of our body, of our mind, of our words and of sentiments of the heart which is meant 
exclusively for the benefit of Krishna, which is completely devoid and even the slightest smell of any other desire, which is not covered by karma, fruitive activity, jnana, the cultivation of knowledge to attain liberation, yoga, the development of mystic power, and dry austerities and other things, that very continuous cultivation, which is performed under the guidance of Shuddha Vaishnav, of pure devotee of the Lord, that is called Uttama Bhakti. Again, again you should do it. Yeah. And very... And the theory, the theory, the theory. So, so only, that all can understand. Can you repeat again? Yeah. The continuous and unbroken cultivation of every single one of our endeavors which are performed by our body, by our mind, and by our words, which are meant exclusively for the benefit of Krishna. This will be called Uttam Bhakti if such an endeavor is also completely devoid of any other desire and it is not covered by karma, the fruitive activities, jnana, the cultivation of knowledge to attain liberation, yoga, the development of mystic power, and dry renunciation. Or then it can be called Bhutama Bhakti. So this is the outline of the guidance of? Hmm? Yes. But in the Anugatya, under the guidance of a pure devotee, associate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is called Uttama Bhakti. This is the general definition. But Srila Vishnu Chakrabhitakur, he has entered into this subject matter very, very deeply. First of all, he says that this entire verse revolves around the verb uh, Shilanam. Shilanam, what does it mean? Shil Dhatu, the verbal root Shil, means a cultivation. In other words, Bhakti is Kriyatmaka. It's an activity. It's an activity. Gyan, knowledge is not an activity. If you know that you are thirsty and you need water, but you have no water, then what is the benefit? No benefit. And if you're actually drinking water, then what is the requirement of knowledge? So, Gyan oh, has no power or influence, but Bhakti is an activity which is performed in two ways. Shil Dhatu, this verb, has two parts. One is called Cheshta Rup and one is called Bhav Rup. Cheshta Rup means an activity which is performed by the senses of maybe the material body or spiritual body depending on the stage of the devotee. And Bhav Rup means or the feelings of the heart. So Bhakti has two sides. Cheshta Rup, the activities, and Bhav Rup, the feelings of the heart. Chesta Rup is also two kinds. Now Chesta Rup is divided into two types. That is called Sadhan Rup and Prabhupadyatman Dipnatyatman. Sadhan Rup and Karya Rup. Sadhan Rup is practiced by the devotees who are in the level of Sadhan Bhakti. They are practicing in this world. And that Sadhan Rup is also divided into two parts. Pravriti Atmaka Chesta Rup and Nivriti Atmaka Chesta Rup. In other words, the activity of the devotees who are doing a practice, a sadhan in this world, has two aspects. First, Pravriti Atmaka Chesta Rup means that we will have to do all of those things which are very uh, favorable for our advancement in devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam. All the angas of bhakti very strongly will have to follow that. We'll have to accept all the things which are favorable, such as Utsaha Nistya Dharya Tatta Karma Pravatanam. Being enth very enthusiastic, having confidence, being very patient, accepting all the angas of bhakti, following them carefully. And in this way, this is called Pravriti Atmaka Chastarupa. Then Nivriti Atmaka Chastarupa will also have to make a chesta, an endeavor, to very firmly give up all those things which are destructive to bhakti. What is destructive? Atyahara, Priyasas, Chapra, Jalpo, Niyamagraha. Overeating, overcollecting, overendeavoring, having a bad association, speaking unnecessarily about mundane things. All of these things. Especially offenses. Give up. Aparad. 
don't make any offense to the chanting of Harinam. Hmm? Don't make any offense in the Seva, Seva Aparaj, Vaishnava Aparaj. Do not offend Guru or Vaishnavas in any way. Other all kinds of honors. Hmm. So this, this, this Cheshtarup has two parts, Sadhana and Karjarup. The Sadhana has two parts, Pravriti Atmaka Cheshtarup and Nivriti Atmaka Cheshtarup. To accept the very favorable things and to very firmly, strongly give up the negative things. This also requires very enthusiastic endeavor. Hmm? It's easy to be enthusiastic about Kirtan, hmm? but when it becomes time to become enthusiastic about not watching TV or hmm, drinking tea or coffee or anything, this any, any addictions, then we don't have so much enthusiasm. Hmm? But no, Bhakti is not like this. Enthusiasm is a knife with two edges. It should be on the positive side and enthusiasm to also give up the negative things. So that is called the sadhan roop, it has two parts. The karya roop means activities which are undertaken by the devotee who has attained bhav bhakti. In other words, his anubhavs, such as laughing, crying, rolling on the ground, he has contortions of the body, yawning, drooling, all these anubhavs, they're included in the karya roop. So the anubhavs and also satyakabhavs, they're in this category. Now we've discussed the Chester Roop, now we'll discuss the Bhav Roop. How is Bhakti as an emotion, as a transcendental feeling, service to Krishna? This is divided into uh, two parts. One part is called Stai Bhav Roop and the other part is called Sanchari Bhav Roop. When the devotee sadhan Bhakti is mature, he will attain Rati or the Stai Bhav. He'll have one fixed emotional relationship with Krishna it may be in Dasa, Sakya, Vatsaya or Madhurya, as a servant, as a friend, as a parent or as a beloved. Mm -hmm. So this permanent sentiment towards Krishna, this is called Vistai Bhav or Bhav Roop. And Sanchari Bhav, it means that this permanent mood of love for Krishna is like an ocean. But that ocean has many waves. So the waves which are rising and falling in that ocean, there are 33 types of Vyabhachari Bhav, hmm? such as sometimes devotee becomes very proud of Krishna. Sometimes he feels great humility, especially at the time of separation. Sometimes the devotee becomes afraid, the Tras Bhav, Marsha, indignation. So many moods like waves rise and fall in the ocean of the Stai Bhav. So all of these things, they are included in the word Shilanam. Bhakti is a cultivation of all the endeavors of body, mind and words and also of spiritual moods. This is called Chilana. But Chilana, Rupa Goswami has given one prefix here. What is that? Anu. Anu Chilana. Hmm? These endeavors and these moods should be not only Chilana, but Anu Chilana. The word Anu has many meanings, but two are very prominent. The first meaning of Anu is Nirantara. Bhakti is Nirantara Taryamai. It's continuous. The endeavor should not be stopped at any time. Like Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj was performing his devotional service. But when he saw the deer drowning, that baby deer, he took the deer out and he began to take care of this deer. So he interrupted his bhakti and in his next life, he took birth as a deer due to attachment to that deer. So here Bharat Maharaj, he was doing bhakti. But the, what was the defect? Anu. It was not Niran Tardyamai. It was not continuous. He took a break. And that break was a very great calamity in his life. So Bhakti should not have any interruption. It should be Niranta, continuous. The second important meaning of the word Anu is Anugatya. Anugatya means to be under guidance. To be under guidance. Those who are near and dear to Krishna, the associates of Krishna, if we will serve Radha and Krishna under their guidance, only then it will be bhakti. If someone will try to make an independent endeavor to approach Radha and Krishna, then their service will never be accepted. But if one will try to become, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained, Gopi Bhatu Padakamaliva Dasa Das Anu Dasa Hayanu Anu comes. The servant of the servant of the servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, servant of the servant of Radha and Krishna, being very carefully under their guidance, then bhakti will be successful. 
This anugati will have to begin in this world. In this life, we must be without any independent mood. We will have to make our heart's desire one with the heart's desire of Guru. Guru Mukapatya Bhakya Chitete Kuriya Akya Ana Kuriya Mani Asha My only desire is this, that my heart should become one with the words emanating from the lotus lips of Guru. So this Anugati will begin here. And if it will not begin here, how will we go to that world? Why? Because the Lalita Vishaka, Chicha Champakanata and others, the associates of Radharani, they are following Shimati Radhika. She is Yuteshwari. And the Manjuris, Rupa Manjuri is following Lalita Saki. And all the other Manjuris are following Rupa Manjuri. So the transcendental bhakti of the spiritual world itself is Anugatya Mai. It's under guidance of those who are more inspired and perfect in their transcendental love. So if in this world we'll not accept this principle, how will we ever attain that world? Oh, it will be quite impossible. So here Rupa Goswami Pad said, Anu, Anu Shilanam. This is Bhakti. One other qualification should be there. Anu Kulyena Krishna Anu Shilanam. Devotional service should be Anu Kul. It means favorable to Krishna. Now, some persons can put forward the idea that the word Anukul means for Krishna's happiness. But our Acharyas, they have refuted this point. The word Anukul, meaning favorable, does not mean necessarily for Krishna's happiness, immediate happiness. Why? Because we see that if Krishna is naughty, then what will Mother Yashoda do? She'll take him by the ear and twist his ear and give him a slap. And he'll begin to weep. If, you, if she's dressed him very nicely, and then he goes and becomes covered in mud and cow dung and dust, and then he comes to his mother, Oh, mother, mother, I want to come in your lap. She'll say, No, I'll not give you my breast milk. And Krishna will weep. So here it seems that Madhya Shoda is making Krishna unhappy, making him cry. Krishna wants to drink her breast milk, but what will she do? She'll put him down and go and save the milk which is boiling over on the stove. Why? This makes Krishna unhappy. No. Here, bhakti means not for the immediate happiness of Krishna, but for his benefit. Madhya Yashoda thinks, if I will give some chastisement to Krishna when he's naughty, then I give him some discipline. Then when he grows up, he'll be a very good character. But if I don't chastise him and give him discipline, when he go grows up, he may become a dacoit or a thief or any bad character, and he may become a rascal, a scoundrel, and he'll be very upset. So I have to control him and discipline him. Oh, I have to save the milk from boiling over. Why? Because Krishna likes to drink my breast milk, but he also likes kia, sweet rice. He likes to take a rubbery and, uh, and he likes the paneer. He likes yogurt and butter. I cannot make yogurt, butter and cheese from my breast milk. So I'll have to put him down and save the milk from boiling over so that I can make all of these things for the benefit of Krishna. So we see on the other hand, Srila Vishnu Tagitako gives an example that when Krishna was in the wrestling arena of Kansa, in that Ramshala, he began to fight. Krishna and Balaram Prabhu fought with Chanura and Mustika. At that time, those powerful wrestlers, they were trying to kill Krishna and Balaram, and they would beat them with their fists and try to crush them. So when Krishna was beaten by the fists of the wrestlers, at that time he was very happy because he was in a mood for a good fight. So this gave happiness to Krishna. But is it bhakti? It can never be bhakti. Because their intention is not to benefit Krishna, but rather to kill Krishna. So the conclusion is that Anukul, favorable, the word Anukul means Pratikul Bhav Rohita. That this service, which is under guidance towards Krishna, should be Pratikul Bhav Rohita. It should be Rohit, that means completely devoid of Pratikul Bhav, any mood of animosity or enmity or any mood against or opposed to Krishna. This is the meaning of the word Anukul. So, Anukul Yena Krishna Anushinam Bhakti Uttama. Anything one thing more. Anything which is not life, which is a particular to name, in a tree. Anukul Vinaya to, but to do. So, if there's something which is an inanimate object, has no life, like a tree, or a rock, or a stone. This has no mood against Krishna. So will it be bhakti? No. Therefore, Rupa Goswami Pad, he had to use both words. Anukul yena, 
and Krishna Anushilanam. The, the Anukul Yena indicates there should not be any mood against Krishna. And at the same time, there should be Krishna Anushilanam. Shesta. That should be Shesta. Positive endeavor. The Shilanam means an endeavor. Should also make an endeavor. So someone who is neutral, on the fence, not doing anything negative, but also not doing anything positive. Their, their existence, their idea, it cannot be bhakti. Therefore, Rupa Goswami very carefully included the word Anukulyena and Anushilanam, so that you have a perfect idea of bhakti. If this is called the Swarup Lakshan of bhakti, or the intrinsic form of bhakti, the intrinsic uh, nature of bhakti has been defined by the line Anukulyena Krishna Anushilanam. But unless the Tatasta Lakshan, or the marginal characteristic, the extrinsic characteristic of bhakti is also present. It may be called bhakti, but it will not be called uttama bhakti. That, that bhakti, which is uttam, ut means above and tama means darkness. It will be uttama bhakti, the devotional service, which is above the darkness of this material world. In other words, transcendental bhakti, if the marg marginal or extrinsic characteristic, the tatasta lakshan, is present. So what is that Tatasta Lakshan? We may try very hard to follow the Swarup Lakshan or the, the intrinsic form of Bhakti, but unless the extrinsic uh, characteristics of Bhakti are also present, then it will never be transcendental. So we have to be very careful for that. The extrinsic or Tatasta Lakshan of Bhakti is given in the first line of the verse, that is, Anyabhilashita Shunyam. This is the first one. And the second one, Jnana Kamat Jnana So we'll look at them one by one. First of all, Anyabhilashita Shunyam. The word Shunya means completely devoid of. Not even a trace, not even a smell. If you have a, a bottle with some petrol, some gasoline in it, yeah, and you pour out all the gasoline, now it's empty. But what happens? There's a, some smell is left behind. So our heart should be free from Anyabhilas. Free from other desires. Should not have oh, any. No, no. Something wrong. Sit, I'll come. Can you come to sit a letter? <laughs> so, it should be free from Anyabilas, other desires. That means, in the heart, there should not be any desire. But even if all desires come out, even the smell should not be left behind. Completely purified of other desire. Only the Vritti of Swarup Shakti, the essence of Samvet and Tladini Shakti, can take out everything that there's no smell of any other desire at all. So here, Anyabhilashita Shunyam means completely devoid of any Anya, means other, Abhilas means desire. So Anyabhilas Shunyam, but there's a little suffix here on the end of the word. Anyabhilashita. Why did Rupa Goswami part give this suffix on the end of the word? This Why he could not tell Anyabhilash? Why he told Annapilashita? So this is the very cryptic question. Why does the verse say this? Why not Anyabilash Shunyam? Why Anyabilashita Shunyam? Why? Oh, it's a very a, a difficult point. But our Acharyas, such as Srila Vishnu Tagri Thakur, have cleared it very carefully. First of all, this we should understand that this Pratyay, this suffix on the end of Anyabilas indicates that it means having the quality at the time of one's natural disposition. In other words, one should have the quality of being completely devoid of all other desires when one is situated in his natural disposition. So this is quite a complex point, but by an illustration, we can understand it very easily. If a person, they never ordinarily ask Krishna for anything at all, but at the time of great danger, if a calamity will come, if a life-threatening situation will come, it may, Draupadi. such as Draupadi, when Draupadi was in the council of the Kauravas, and Dushashan, he came and he wanted to rip off her sari and make her naked in front of everyone. At that time, Draupadi was very helpless. At that time when Dushashan was tearing away her sari, she raised her hands in the air and called out, 
हे गोविंद हे गोपाल राको शान अब तो जीवन है ओ कृष्ण नाउ माई लाइफ वो बी फिनिश्ड प्लीज आई एम टेकिंग शेल्टर ऑफ यू प्लीज सेव मी एंड वॉट हैपन कृष्ण अपेयर देर इन हिज वस्त्र अवतार इन हिज सॉरी इन कॉन्डेशन ही बिकेम द सॉरी of dropadi and he dushash was pulling and pulling meters and meters and meters of cloth his arms are as powerful as 60000 elephants but he was pulling and pulling until those powerful arms became tired and the sari was piled up to the ceiling but still the sari was still coming and it never came to an end so krishna appeared and as the vastra avatar dropadi sari incarnation to save her now someone may say that if bhakti is the cultivation of all endeavors meant which are for the benefit of krishna then dropadi is not doing bhakti why because she called out to save her own shame to her own to protect her own shyness so she has broken the uh, definition of bhakti so can we say that dropadi has uh, interrupted her devotional service we cannot why because in ordinary circumstances in her life she would never think of asking krishna for anything she only wants to serve him but when she was put into this very dangerous life threatening situation at that time to call out to krishna oh krishna please save me this is not a, a breach or an interruption in one's bhakti because it's not in one's nature it is not one's nature shila gurudev gives another example once upon a time there were some boys playing in the forest and they thought they would play a joke so they began to scream help help there's a tiger there's a tiger coming hmm? so the men in the village took their weapons and ran out there and when they came to fight with the tiger all the boys were laughing hmm? and oh they saw it was a trick actually there's no tiger there then on another day again they thought they would play the same joke help me help me a tiger's coming and then they came running there but there was no tiger but then one day came and a real tiger came and then the boys called out help us help us the tiger has come but the men in the village they thought oh they're playing a trick on us again and they didn't go hmm? why because those boys they were not in danger yet they were in the habit of calling oh please come and help me it was their habit so at one stage then no one came to help them so for that person it was in their nature to ask for help even though there was no dangerous situation so that person is not they are they have anya bilashita it is in their nature that in a natural condition they have other desires so rupa goswami pat said anya bilashta shunyam that because devotees in this world especially the sadak he has some connection with his body at the time of danger he is bound to call out to the lord yet the lord will not consider this to be a break in his devotional service and therefore to accommodate that uh instance to accommodate that situation within the definition of bhakti then rupa goswami pad gave the suffix sita and wrote and ya pila sita shunya is it clear shila gurudev said if there are any questions if someone does not understand they can raise their hand so and ya pila sita shunya jnana kama tenavrita this is the beauty of the definition of shila rupa goswami that his definition does not have the fault of ativyakti or avyakti dosh ativyakti dosh means his definition is not too broad that it will include things which are actually not bhakti such as the the fighting of the the beating of the restless against krishna which gave krishna happiness and avyakti dosh means that his definition is not too narrow that it would exclude something which would be included in bhakti such as madhya shodas putting krishna down and making him cry or dropadi is calling out for help when she was being disrobed by dushashan so this is the beauty and perfection of shri rupa goswami pad's definition that it has no ativyakti dosh the defect of overextension of the definition and avyakti dosh the defect of underextension of the definition now jnana kama janavritam bhakti should not be covered by karma what does karma mean karma means activities prescribed in the vedas so what is prescribed in the vedas you have to eat you also have to breathe you have to take bath there are so many bodily necessities that we'll have to do in vedic society if your parents pass away then you have to offer shraddha do the pinda offering some oblations for your deceased forefathers these are different types of karmas given in the vedas so should you give up all of these things 
Should it be karma, jnanadi, shunya? No. Rupa Goswami Pada said, no, that you don't have to give up these things. It should be jnana, karmadi, anavritam. That you, the uh, duties of life should not cover your bhakti. So now the question comes, when do the duties that we have to perform in our life cover our bhakti? When? When we have faith in those duties, thinking that if I do them, my devotion to Krishna will increase. And if I neglect them, my devotion to Krishna will be uh, hampered. It will be, it will be detrimental for my devotion. So if someone thinks, my parents have passed away, I will have to do their shraddha ceremony. Mm? And if I don't do it, then my bhakti will be upset. Mm? Then that person now has some faith in karma, which is covering his devotional service. And if he thinks, if I don't do it, it will disturb my bhakti. If he thinks, if I do it, then my bhakti will increase. This faith in karma or prescribed duties of this world is a covering of bhakti. So what is the prescription? Oh, we'll have to take a bath, we'll have to eat, we'll have to breathe, we'll have to do some duties in society, hmm? sannyasis, brahmacharis, these are also duties that we'll perform. But we will not think that, hmm? oh, if I don't offer the uh, oblations to my forefathers, then this will destroy my bhakti. In other words, Krishna explained in Gita, Kamani eva nikara ste na faleshu kadachana ma kama fala hetubu mask te sangos prakamani. Hey Arjun, you have a right to do your duty, you can do it. But don't think that you are the cause of the results of your activities. Don't think that you are the enjoyer of the fruit of your activities. So if a person, a devotee in this world, accepts some duties in life, but in a mood of detachment, being detached from them, it will not cover his bhakti. So karma. Now, jnana. Jnana means knowledge. There are three types of knowledge. Tvam padartha jnana, tat padartha jnana, and brahma jiva aikya jnana. First, tat padartha jnana. Knowledge of what is God. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is knowledge. Krishna is Sarva Shakti Man. He has all potencies, internal potency, external potency this world, and Tatastha Shakti, from which the living entities have manifested. He has the power to make the impossible possible and the possible impossible. From him, in a moment, he can create millions of universes and destroy them again, and in a moment recreate them again, so quickly you didn't notice the difference even. Krishna is so powerful. This is knowledge of God. That is called Tat Padartha Gyan. Another type of knowledge, Tvam Padartha Gyan. Knowledge of ourselves. Who am I? Am I God? No, I am not God. Hmm? Am I the Absolute Truth? No. Who am I? Huh? Krishna said, Mamai Vangso Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. Hmm? Every living entity is my separated part and parcel. The living entity is eternal. He has no beginning, middle and end. And by Swarup, by constitution, Jivera Swarupai Krishna Nitya Das. Every soul by constitution is a servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is called Tvam Padartha Gyan. Hmm? Now the third type of knowledge, Brahma Jiva Aikya Gyan. That means to cultivate the knowledge that Brahma, the Supreme Absolute Truth, Nirvishesh, Nirakar, Nirgun, Nishakti, having no power, having no shape, no form, no personality, that is the Supreme Truth, and the Jiva and that impersonal Brahma are the same. There's no difference between them at all. Everything is one, and whatever variety exists is complete illusion. So this is another type of Jnana, it's called Brahma Jiva Aikya Jnana. So of these three types of knowledge, Tat Padatha Jnana, knowledge of God, and Tvam Padatha Jnana, knowledge of the soul, these two types of knowledge do not cover Bhakti. In the beginning, we'll have to have this type of knowledge. When Bhav is mature, at that time we can forget. But in the beginning, this knowledge is essential. Uh, sambandha Gyan, Sadharana Sambandha Gyan. A general or common knowledge of the relationship between the soul and God is important. And therefore, in the beginning, it will not cover Bhakti. But the impersonalistic knowledge that no, we are not individuals, and there's only oneness, just like light, and nothing else exists, and we are that light, I am God, you are God, we are all God. Hmm? 
in that life there is nothing. So ultimately God is nothing and everything is nothing like Shunyavad. Hmm? And voidism. This knowledge is very dangerous and it will be an obstacle and it will cover bhakti. It will not allow bhakti to manifest itself. Therefore, Rupa Goswami Pad said, Jnana kamat kanavritam. Some karma we should accept without attachment so that it will not cover. Some jnana we can accept so that we can understand the direction, the aim of our life and how to attain it. But we can accept. But those having faith in karma and having impersonal knowledge, this is very dangerous to bhakti. So we should not follow that because it will be the avrita. It will be a covering. That should be given up. Now karma jnana adi. The word adi means etc. So by the word adi, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad has indicated the practice of mystic yoga. Those who follow the Astanga yoga system hmm, and the, uh, they control their breathing and go into meditation and do hard austerities and the aim and object of their practice is yoga city, mystic power, anima, lagima, mahima, hmm, karma, vasayita, practicity. They want to be able to fly in the sky. They want to be able to reach out and pick an apple from the other side of the world. They want to become lighter than air or smaller than an atom so they can enter into anything. These are mystic powers. The desire to attain, oh, the, all these mystic powers is very detrimental for bhakti. So this should also be given up, this, these desires and this attempt to attain mystic power. Here, Adi also does not only indicate the practice of the mystic yoga system for yoga city, but also indicates Shushka Vairagya, dry renunciation. Those who will, oh, just leave everything and give up everything. Hmm? Artificially, by force, they give up their eating and their sleeping. They become very austere. What will happen? Their heart will become very hard. And bhakti, which is very soft and sweet, will not be able to enter into that heart. When their hearts become hard, then they also become proud. Oh, no one can stay awake for as many days as me. Who can eat as little food as me? All are lazy, they have to take rest, but I never take rest. And when someone becomes very austere, by force, not by the influence of bhakti, but by force. You know that Raghunath Das Goswami also gave up eating and sleeping and all of these things. But why? Because he was weeping. Hey Radhe, hey Braja Devi, hey Chalalite, hey Nanda Sunokuta. Oh Radhika, where are you? Oh Krishna, where are you? Oh Lalita Saki, where are you? His renunciation uh, was like lines in stone, but it was not artificial. Hmm? He left all the things of this world because he was absorbed in separation, love in separation from Radha and Krishna. So automatically he forgot everything. But those who artificially will try to renounce everything, their heart will become hard. They may become proud and they may commit offenses like Durvasa Rishi and others, Subari Rishi and others. And as a result of that offense, what happened? Oh, then they come into a very dangerous and diabolical situation in their life. Subari Rishi fell down and Durvasa Rishi was chased all over the universe by the flaming Sudarshan Chakra. So Rupa Goswami Pad, he said, if we want our continuous unbroken uh, endeavors of body, mind and words which is performed under the guidance of Sadhguru and Vaishnavas to be actually transcendental. We should not have any other desire in a natural condition. We should not have faith in karma, jnana, yoga and dry renunciation, astrology. Hmm? Now the devotees are thinking, what should I do? Should I surrender to Guru and Krishna? Should I leave all things and go to India and be under the guidance of Guru? Let me look in my astrological chart. <laughs> My astrological chart says that I will be a pure devotee after 15 years, so I'll take it easy now. And then after 15 years, then I'll become serious. <laughs> and those who have faith in astrology and these things, they, they don't understand. Uh, it is true that your life history is written on the palm of your hand. But those who will clap their hands in the kirtan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all their lives will be changed and all their future can be finished. And Krishna will take away all their karmas. And by surrender at the lotus feet of Sri Guru, they can enter into pure bhakti at that moment when they surrender to his lotus feet. Thank you. Well, one question will come. In this definition, it has been called Krishna Nushilana. Krishna Nushilana for Krishna. Then why to serve Guru, Shiksha Dikha, 
Visham Venu Guru Shiva and other uh, parts of Bhakti by Sundar Gopal. Why we should serve Guru? By Diksha and Siksha, we should know everything done for Krishna one. Then why all these? Om Jnana Timiran Rasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha We should know, we should know that what is the question first? The question is, in this definition of pure bhakti, Srila Rupa Goswami states, Krishnanu Shilanam. One should engage, one should cultivate all endeavors for the benefit in the service of Sri Krishna. So the question may arise, why should a person serve Guru? Why should a person serve the Vaishnavas? Does it not merely suffice to engage all of one's actions. What is the need of diksha and siksha? What is the need of shiksha and diksha? Why Guru Padashraya taking shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Guru? It does it not. We should serve Krishna and Lord. Why we have to serve Guru? Does it not suffice simply to serve Sri Krishna? We should understand that there are two, Bhagavan has two manifestations, Vishaya Bhagavan and Ashraya Bhagavan. Vishaya Bhagavan is Sri Krishna. Ashraya Bhagavan is Baladev Prabhu or Nityananda, in other words, Guru Tattva. In the verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Arachanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam. The same question arises, are these nine limbs of bhakti to be directed simply in the service of Sri Krishna? No. The verse that follows, Iti pung sarpita vishno bhaktish chenna lakshana kriyeta bhagavat yadha tanmanye dhitam utamam. The word here, the dual case has been used for this very specific reason. In other words, one will not simply worship Krishna, but one will also worship Guru or Ashraya Bhagavan. It is stated, Prataman tu gurum puja tatashchaiva mamarchanam kurvan siddhim avaknoti yanyata nishpalam bhavet. Here Sri Krishna states, any person who endeavors to worship me alone without worshipping Sri Guru first, the endeavours of that person will be worthless. In other words, such a person will achieve nothing. Yet, someone who first, with all dedication, worships Sri Guru, and then Anu, under the guidance of Sri Guru, worships Sri Krishna, that person will attain all perfection. This particular point is stated in all Shastra. Yasya Deve Para Bhakti Yata Deve Tata Guru Tasyaite Katita Yata Prakashante Mahatmana If one wishes to attain Para Bhakti, in other words transcendental bhakti, in other words Uttama Bhakti which we've just been speaking about, what should such a person do? Such a person must give his heart unconditionally in the service of Sri Guru. Such a person must worship Guru with the same dedication, love, attention, and lack of interruption or break as one serves Sri Hari. Jasya Devi Parabhakti. You remember? This is slow. Go. So, it is stated throughout Shah. Bhakti should be for Krishna and also Krishna Sambandhi. Huh? Then 
ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸಂಬಂಧಿ ಇವನ್ ಇಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಫೇವರೇಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಟು ಮಾದರ್ ಜಸೋದಾ ವೆರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಟು ಮಾದರ್ ಜಸೋದಾ ನಂದ ಬಾಬಾ ಗೋಪೀಸ್ ದೆನ್ ವೆರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ so it should be related to krishna and for krishna both then it will be not oh go from that can you sing the phale hari hari the phale janu gwain like your melody of your sister try to be by the ko to <laughs> oh uh, what what is that uttama bhakti consists of two parts chaitanya roop and bhakti for the endeavors of the body mind and words and the sentiments of the heart so how is it that part of chaitanya roop is sadam because in sadan bhakti is there bhav is there sentiments of the heart i could not understand sorry oh what is telling oh you should uh, you should reply i could not understand shanti shanti when you raise raising this question that what question the question is if the bhakti pure bhakti has uh, two parts sadan roop and bhav roop but in the stage of sadan there is no bhav so can sadan bhakti be included in the definition of uttama bhakti oh this question has been arrived by vishwanath chakrat thakur himself he is telling atah krishna madi na bhavit grajendri shavan mukho hi jivado swayam pratyakta any sadhak by his can by any his uh, material senses can be used in krishna bhakti because krishna bhakti is transcendental shravanam kirtanam smaranam bandhanam shaktam or sadhu sang naam kirtan bhagavat shravan mathura vas shimurti all are transcendental how a sadhak by all his material senses he can uh, do in the bhav oh krishna is very much very and bhakti what is the mood of radhika so radhika is herself bhakti she knows everything when we will pray under the guidance of gurudev then tadatma mood will come tadatma you know then oh mercifully krishna or radhika is trying to hit their mercy and then that mood will come by the mercy of krishna in the senses of material senses of the devotee and that is called tadatma sadhan at that time there is no mood what sadhan beginning from uh, dhruva and other devotees which had not attended mood or rati their bhakti will be called bhakti or not all are sadhan up to bhav stage rati stage all are sadhan understand all are sadhan beginning from sadha and ending up to rati achieving rati that is why uh, 
Bilbamangal. They are Sadhak. He has mood or not. He has. But Sadhak, like a Dhruva, has he mood or not? He has no mood. He worships Krishna, meditating Krishna, only for his reason, to have kingdom. So no mood. But he still, he will be called Sadha. So this but, is the Sadha of a Baba Bhakta. Yes. Okay. Yes. Understand? <coughs> you also? Question. But earlier, Gurudev, you said there were two verses we should know. One from the Bhagavatam, and you gave that verse, Tatena Kampan. And then you said one from Gita, but you never... Oh, I don't. What is that? Dukhe svanu digmena, shukhe svanu digati spriya, bita ra dukhaya krodha. That he can do bhajan, otherwise not. Fickle man cannot do bhajan. Those who want to take revenge that he has done against me, I should take revenge. This person cannot do bhajan. Never and never. So, in the morning he told, what name? Vila Suprabhu. Tila Dabi Sumi Chena, Tarorapi Sahishrana, Amanina Madhani, Kirtani Asatara. We should try to follow. Not only by words, by power. Core of heart we should follow. And then you will see. Oh, very soon you are Bhakti, definitely. So, Vasudeva <coughs> Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janyate Asu Parajyam Jnanancha Jata. If that kind of bhakti that we explain just now, Vasudeva Iyar Krishna, if that kind of pure bhakti will be in the world, for the benefit of Krishna, to please Krishna both, then what will be very soon, very soon, all kinds of tattva gyan that he told, tattva gyan, tattva gyan, every all kinds of gyan, even how more everything will come by the association of of bona fide guru and qualified Vaishnava like Sukh Narad. Or you know Nara, he is not only in this world, he is not only in heavenly planet, he is not only in Golok, Dwarka, he has so many forms as Krishna. In all universes, millions of, <coughs> millions of Nara, but form is same, but mood is different. <coughs> so, Janat Asu Parakyam, what will be? Parakyam means? Detachment. Detachment for God. Detachment will go from your children, your husband, your wives. Then how? Then every will fall Krishna. Some be like Abhimanyu. Like on him, mother and father. Like, oh, who heard Bhagavatam? Panchit Maharaj. Like that. So, Bairag will come like home. Bhat Maharaj in his lost life, Brahman life. Like Ramnath Das Goswami. <coughs> like both Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj. Parak will come, and all kinds of knowledge will come. But one thing, Parma Sunishita, that bhakti, Dharma Dhokcha Jeeva Bhakti, if you are doing, but no taste in Hari Katha, sweet past and sweet and powerful past tense of Krishna, you have no interest, no taste, then all you are doing bhajan, and all in the power of your Senses, continuous doing all the things, will nothing do, like zero. 
and that is why in Srimad Bhagavatam, top to bottom, first the history of life history of devotees, and after that, three pastimes of Krishna has been told, top to bottom, especially Braja Leela has been told. Those who will, Devam Brata, Saprai Priya Nama Kritya, Jata Nurago Dita Chitta Ochai, Asatta Goro Dati Rauti Rai, Unama Dirati Nitya Tiloka, Srinvan Subhadra Nirathanga Pane, Janamani Karamani Chajani Loka, Gita Ninamani Tadat Thakani, Gayam Vilajyo Vichare Dasanga. The three past times of Krishna, who will explain, who will hear, who will certify, मैंने अनु अनु मोदन कर दे, मैंने अनु मोदन अनु मोदन जाके ये ओ ये चलेंगे ओके कंफर्म वो भी कंफर्म है ऑल विल हैव प्योर भक्ति सो हरि कथा विदाउट हरि कथा इन दी एसोसिएशन ऑफ हाई क्लास ऑफ वाइस नाउ डोर हु हैव गिवन हु हैव गिवन डिटेक हु आर डिटेक्स फ्रॉम वर्ल्डली रिलेशंस एंड विथ तत्व ज्ञान विथ हर नोइंग दी ओ स्वीट एंड पावरफुल पास टाइम्स ऑफ कृष्णा फ्रॉम देयर यू विल हैव टू हीर विल हैव टू एक्सप्लेन इवन इन अवर सॉंग्स in our literature, writing, hearing, anyhow, it comes in our heart, in our mind. Then, at once we will be liberated and Krishna Bhakti will come. Then, Badam Vitakta Vidas Taktam, we will explain tomorrow. Some things will be left for tomorrow. <laughs> but I am satisfied that, oh, you know so many devotees from Fiji, mainland, Australia, India, there, eh? Seishnok, oh, from Singapore, New Zealand, Holland, America, all are here. I am very happy and you should try to uh, manage the classes of devotees in morning, in midday, they should announce, and you should try to hear all classes because they are managing your uh, prasadam event, everything. Only you will have to hear Hari Katha and to sleep, nothing else. <laughs> Hari Bo! For five days, five days more, uh, five days more. So uh, tomorrow is Purnima for all gentlemen shaving. Uh, we have a schedule printed up. There's about 15 copies right now. We can make more. We will be putting up, uh, posting the copies at all the strategic homes and uh, buildings here for everyone. If you want your own copy to carry around, see Mahaprabhu Prabhu. And uh, this has the schedule of classes and also the topics of those classes. So, and also if, uh, tomorrow uh, morning's class at 7:30, Shripad Bhaktivedanta uh, Sajjan Maharaj on Shravanam, the process of hearing. Then at uh, Bhajans will start then at 7, then 7:30 class. Then again Bhajans at 10:30, and class at 11 by Shripad Bhaktivedanta Madhav Maharaj.